Good morning, all you seekers and purveyors of ideas worth spreading. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here, my honor uh, to be here with you today and to see you four times as well. So as Brian mentioned, I am a solo classical violinist gone horribly wrong. <laughs> or right, as the case may be, and as your viewpoint might dictate. And um, I figured that at lunch I'll get to know you, but for right now, I would love to start by sharing with you just a few details about myself. Is that all right? So I was born in Los Angeles, California, and at the age of four, my parents walked into me and said, would you like to study the violin? And what this meant to me was a new toy and at least a car ride and getting out of the house. Now, I was uh, an only child, perhaps a bored creative child. I had a lot of trouble with the word play. Of course, I wasn't trying to understand it existentially at that point, but I still, you know, it, it was a little bit difficult for me as an only child to just sort of play by myself. And, you know, irony is the spice of life because now I'm one of those guys that will stand up here very confidently and say, I've never worked a day in my life. And you've heard that many, many times. And what that means to me personally is that throughout my uh, career, you know, when I was four years old, I started in the Suzuki method. You know, I played Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star and all the rest of the concertos that the other kids played. And my parents had a destiny for me. They wanted me to be the next Yasha Heifetz, who I ended up very fortunate to study with uh, when I was 18. And then I ended up in a symphony orchestra after going to conservatory. And in that symphony orchestra, I sat there one day and I said to myself, self, um, what is your path? And I just knew that there was some voice out there that I was going to need to find. So one day I walked upstairs instead of going home and quit the orchestra, went back to school. Now, my young life was filled with the rigors and disciplines, not only of classical music, but of the very fundamentalist, evangelical, and sometimes Pentecostal uh, religious upbringing that I had. And so things were quite black and white, right? And then, as I opened up past all my rigors, past all my boundaries, things became a, quite a bit happier for me. I sat at 22 years old saying, man, if I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life, I better find some ways to enjoy this more. I would find myself on stage playing classical music for my colleagues, for an audience, being so nervous about messing up, to be you know, just completely incapacitated. I found a way through improvisation because when I started to make music just by myself, I had to accept that it wasn't gonna be so great and that there was a learning curve. It was entering a place of play that I had never had in my, uh, in my youth. So it's those paradoxes, you know, the, 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 one, the ones that, that take you from rigorous training then to freedom, when they all sort of begin to coexist. These are the things in my life that have made my musical life, my performance life, my career worth making, worth living, worth having, and the ability to connect to every person, which is really what performance and lecturing and talking and everything else is all about. It's, it's about connecting with another. And the last thing, before I play some music, that has made a huge difference to me, I, uh, I encountered one of these, you know, uh, human growth organizations, that's different from human growth hormones, um, <laughs> you know, which, which taught me the value of possibility as a concept. Not as a crapshoot, this may happen, that may happen, that's sort of more like probability, but possibility as something to live into. I just returned from uh, Zimbabwe, and on my plane flight over, which went through Johannesburg, I was with a 20-year-old uh, former au pair who was just going back to, to be home again for the first time who was very, very young, and she was asking me all sorts of existential questions, and we got to talking about God, and, and you know, this and that, and she says, so, so what do you live for, just to die? And I said, no, I'll tell you what I live for. I live, and I wake up every morning for the possibility that you might be completely and totally self-expressed, that you might show incredible leadership in your life, 
and make the best life possible for you and those around you, and that you may love. So I stand for that possibility for you and that possibility for me, and that's what gets me up in the morning. That's what gets me making music. Most of the music I'll play for you today is made up entirely for you. If there's a video made, if there's a recording made, you and somebody else might hear it. But really, it's just for you. And what I want you to know is that there are very few preconceived notions here. I got tech technolog technologically interested very early. So what you see behind me is a hybrid instrument of a regular old violin and a laptop computer and a whole bunch of stuff in that laptop computer that makes sound. So I'm going to, to uh, just for a, for a few minutes, share with you some music that is just for you and do that with you three more times. Enjoy your day, enjoy all the speakers as I will ride along with you. Thank you. Thank you.